Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood humble short consultant. So this is going to be the first in, I don't know how many videos about response to questions or comments. So past week, I've seen the largest amount of comments coming downrange on the channel so far. And hey, that's it, a great thing. It lets me know the message is being, getting out there and people actually reading. So Susie Q, uh, I'm not sure how I know you. I know you stumbled across the channel. I know you've had a stroke yourself from your comments. Uh, and you commented to the uh, central post-stroke uh, pain video. Uh, Psychic Waffles. You commented a couple of my videos. Uh, one of them you said dope video. Thank you. Uh, another one you were sorry to hear that stroke happens. Trust me, dude. Anyone that's had a stroke... All of us uh, fellow stroke folk, be it you're the stroke assaulter or the yeomanry of the, the stroke assaulter, yeah, strokes fucking suck. That's just, <laughs> yeah, they suck. Um, around Indiana, you made a comment about one of my uh, videos in regards to the two fucktards in the land down under. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure how their channel hasn't been given a community guideline flag yet for these little fake getaways that they try to have. Um, Joy Bradford, again, you made some comments. Thank you very much. Um, now, there was one comment that I was kind of perplexed about. And I didn't really know the comment was made till about an hour ago so which video was that on so i made a video on being self-conscious in public after a stroke because that is a thing for some of us stroke folk right and unfortunately you know i made the video On December 4th, it's currently the 13th. It's almost 10 days ago. And I must, this one skipped right by me. Five days ago, Seamus Sky, um, you posted a comment, I'm happy you had a stroke. Um, could you please elaborate what you mean? Because either you're happy that I am able to give content about strokes and I'm trying to be a bit upbeat about it, informative about it, or you're happy that my brain tried to kill me. I'm not really sure where you fall in on that spectrum. So if you could kind of, you know, give some clarity to your thinking, that'd be great. Now, one of my commenters, what is it? Susie Q, you asked, um, you seem that you, you, you mentioned that I seem to be pretty, uh, switched on, uh, about what's going on with a stroke. Um, and so how do I know what I know? Well, one, I went to school, uh, to work in mental health. Uh, two, I worked in various programs in mental health, be it with uh, young offenders uh, that I worked in a program specifically for young offenders here in Ontario that was geared towards highly psychiatric, highly disturbed young offenders, sex offending youth. I encountered a few youth there that were um, a byproduct of a brain injury. I then worked in what's called the CAS system, Children's Aid Society. Uh, here as well, I worked in a mental health facility on an adolescent crisis and assessment unit. Um, I also worked with acquired brain injury clients or traumatic brain injury clients uh, via um, their insurance companies as a, uh, like a personal support worker. Um, I worked with uh, several clients, one of them for about two and a half years. Uh, I got, you know, so I've, and so I've, I've seen brain injury uh, academically and clinically. Uh, my grandmother, she had a massive stroke when she was 84. We didn't know how long she'd been down for, so they couldn't do anything medically to save her or to restore her quality of life. And she lasted about 18 months-ish um, after her stroke. So um, I got to see 
potentially one of the worst outcomes that you could have from a stroke. She had expressive aphasia. Um, she really was only good for three words, and literally yes, no, and shit were grandma's three most capable words. Um, she had right side paralysis. She could still use her right arm as a flailing club, uh, but that was about that. So that's sort of the experience I've had with stroke um, and brain injury. It was ex was was all clinical and academic and a little bit of experiential through what I got to see my grandmother go through. So when I had my stroke, um, when I had my stroke, I was in the middle of the moderate range of the stroke scores upon it being admitted to emerge. Um, I was the the staff and the team in the emergency department at RVH and Barry. Uh, I have nothing but amazing, wonderful positive things to say about you. Dr. McKenzie, the man who saw me like within minutes of getting off the ambulance, you helped save my life and again I'm forever grateful. Um, I was determined to be able to get out of the hospital as fast as I could because um, no one wants to be there and, 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 and I knew eventually because I was relatively high functioning in the hospital I knew eventually they'd let me out. Right? It's a foregone conclusion. But then when I got home, I got the stroke book from the Heart, uh, heart and Stroke people uh, here in Heart and Stroke Canada. There's a lot to call it the, the manual for the brain to try to kill you. Some of what I was experiencing was not in that book. Or if it was, it was a very tertiary gloss over. And it left me needing information for me to, for me to have meaning. For me to have a point of reference, for me to be able to explain it to people, to go, yeah, this is a, this isn't just me making shit up. This is me and my new normal. This is my new experience. This is how my world's been impacted. So, I do a lot of research before I do some of the topics that I do. And if it is a video where I have to do research, I will include the links so you can provide it to other people. I'm in the middle of researching right now uh, a video on gaze palsy and a video on best practices for return to work. And again, when I when I finally get those videos up and running, they will have all the links um, to it. Now I see someone's just left a comment. Who is this? Oh, Susie Q, 10 minutes ago. Uh, you just left a comment. Let me just read it real quick. Susie, if, if I've just read your comment. You're right now going through one of my aphasia videos, right? Um... If you want to see how bad my aphasia looked, go to Day One Freedom. Now, forget the whole Max Headroom piece. That's my buddy Dave attempting to display humor. Um, unfortunately, he has a birth defect. He has limited ability for effective humor. Um, it's a thing. Um, I, I look forward to you explaining sort of more of your story. And if you care to share it, you know, I, I'd be happy to, you know, if there's anything you want to see me do, Susie, Q, just let me know, and I'll happily do a video on it, um, you know, so, again, I'm just going to be honest, now, I've now got 47 subscribers, I'm going to sue Susie, that, that was you being number 47, and a thank you for joining, so, the channel, again, was started for me to help be, maintain contact for friends and family that don't live near me, that don't maybe get the chance to see me as often as they can, um, I use very dark humor at times. There's a reason for that. One, I was scared. And when I get scared, I use offside humor, right? Because it was the only way to try to pretend for things are normal ish, right? Um, so there were times immediately after my stroke, I, I used very 
Monty Python esque, Black Adder esque, Dave Allen at large, Mash ish inspired humor. That is because that is the only way I felt I could give some normalcy to the events that was ongoing. Right? When your world gets I'm going to use the word demolished, although it's probably not the best word choice. When your word gets demolished, actually it is probably the best word choice now I think about it. When your world gets demolished, like a stroke can do, because you're tripping through your world all fat, dumb, and happy. Um, and all of a sudden you have a stroke. And a matter of minutes, you go from, in my case, standing, having a conversation with someone that you know, um to on the ground stuttering like it was a progress from when someone else picked up on my symptomology to me on the ground five ish ish minutes and then I ended up in the hospital and I appreciate that there are people that have not had a stroke that they're never going to get it right they're they're just they're just not um and for those of you that have found my channel that i don't personally know i don't know how you stumbled across me uh, i know there's a couple of groups on facebook i belong to if i think it's appropriate um and i engage you in a private link conversation i send you a video or two um, that sounds like it might be applicable to your situation, great, I, I will do that. Um, if you've happened to magically just stumble across my channel, I'm not sure how you did it, but I'm glad you found it. Um, I will answer questions as soon as they come up. Again, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com so that you, that you can have a direct contact to me. Um, and if you leave a comment down below, um, I will answer any and all comments. Again, Seamus Sky, I just need a little bit of clarity of what you mean by I was, you were happy that I had a stroke. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that, and I don't think I know you personally. If I do know you personally, I fucking hope you're kidding. So, when it comes to getting through the post-stroke recovery journey. Every person is unique. Every stroke is unique. The deficits, the difficulties, and the dilemmas that are created because of the stroke are, again, unique. There is no definitive, hard and fast benchmark. There's no witness mark. Like there, There's no survey instrument that can be used by your neurologist, your general practitioner, your physiotherapist, your occupational therapist, your speech and language ther therapist, um, your uh, like psychological therapist, any, any other person that can be involved in that clinical team. There is no hard and fast benchmark. None. None at all. Um, <clears throat> you will progress at the rate you're going to progress at. Are you going to feel like you're stumbling and falling? Yes. Um, you know, there is no hard and fast rule, uh, but it is my goal uh, now because I'm, I'm getting a little bit better and I go back to work in 11 days, right? 11 days I go back to work. It is my goal to continue to share my post-stroke journey as it morphs from me finishing a six-month leave of absence, moving on back into the workplace. And again, I'll share some of my stumbles and travels as, as I get back into the workplace for purposes of possible confidentiality and you know not getting hung up at work um i won't address some some issues at all uh and other issues i will address in generalities vagaries um simply because it's something that happens at my workplace and it's not really appropriate that i air those grievances here on the internet um so Unless it's like a positive woohoo from work, um, you're probably not going to share it. Um, simply because it may not be appropriate. 
Uh, I will definitely share, as I'm in the middle of doing the research on that video right now, on best practices for return to work, and I'm doing one on gaze palsy. Now, I will like the central post-stroke central post stroke pain video um i didn't have central post stroke brain pain i do have a central post stroke brain though <laughs> um so i didn't have post stroke pain to that extent i had some numbness some tingling uh headache but not to the sense of you know felt like my skin was on fire or or whatnot so I will make videos about things that I did not necessarily experience. Um, and I will try to provide the most research I can, the most uh, the most reference articles I can for things that I have not personally experienced. So for those of you that have experienced it, um, you may be, get, be able to get better insight. You can point it to your friends and family and go, hey, look, I'm not faking. Like, this is, this is actually a thing. Um, and... You know, generally, I, it is now my goal um, as I continue my post-stroke journey and move on to my return back to work journey to continue making content. Exactly what that schedule will look like, I don't know yet, but definitely well, I'll, I'll make something there. And as content creates comments and questions, I will continue to answer them. And, you know, maybe once every two to three weeks, I'll do a response to comments uh just to let you guys know that i have been reading your comments and and i you know i'm i'm grateful that people have found the channel that i don't know yet uh and for those of you that had a stroke again if there's anything you want to see me cover uh please definitely reach out to me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com i say again strokeassaulter at gmail.com uh any any of you the stroke supporting the yeomanry of those that are stroke folk um please again if there's questions you want to see me cover content that you'd, you'd like to see addressed um please again email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com i say again strokeassaulter at gmail.com or you can leave a comment on a video uh you know and i'll, I'll if i once i see the comment i'll definitely you know reach out to you and maybe ask some specifics but ultimately having a stroke sucks you're just nothing to do about it. Um, and you know what? I'm not really sorry I had a stroke because I'm not looking for pity. Right? And, and, and neither is anyone else that's had a stroke. We're not looking for pity. Right? Uh, at no point during my post-stroke journey have I wanted someone just to arbitrarily feel sorry for me or a sense of pity. Never been the goal. Never wanted, needed, nor desired, right? A uh, little bit of patience, people just being present, and a little bit of perseverance. It's really all you need from your people that support you after a stroke. Uh, and I appreciate that there are people out there that misinterpret you're looking for pity. And they're just horrible humans. You can just ignore them. They... They're not emotionally available, nor probably will they be, so so be it. But on that note, uh, please continue, like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you happen to be going through your own post-stroke journey, or you're supporting someone in their post-stroke journey, uh, or you know of someone, right, please point the channel out to them, like, share, subscribe, leave comments down below. You can reach me, again, at strokeassaulter at gmail.com if you have any questions. Uh, and... If you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you, right, someone appears to be befuddled. And these are like relatively quick onset, right? Someone who appears to be befuddled, confused, or un un unaware of their surroundings or what's going on around them. Someone that has rapid onset vision issues, you see in grayscale, you can't see it in one eye, you can't move your eyes a certain direction, up, down, left, right. Uh, someone that uh, appears to have facial droop, uh, can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Uh, they're unable to smile equally effectively or at all. Slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Uh, general body weakness, weakness on one side, inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. If you're in North America, if you're in the UK, 999. What you might do, 
something so simple could save a life.